How is it going? So, I've had a couple requests of for doing a video on scoring antlers. Now, the goal here is obviously we're not going to submit this number and have Boone and Crockett honor it and get you into the record books. But what we don't want is to have you be the guy that goes on your Facebook shed hunting group, post your, you know, your 140 class buck saying, hey, I scored this, this buck, he's 190, what do you guys think? And then have you get barbecued. That's what we're trying to avoid. It happens. I would say 60 to 70% of the antlers that go on there that with a number associated with them, you go, come on. So I'm going to do it. And, and there are lots of good ones on YouTube already about scoring antlers. Uh, most of them are scoring uh, antlers attached to a skull plate and not necessarily shed antlers. And some of them I think are incomplete. So I'm going to do a quick one. It's just going to be really quick. I'm going to go over just basically how you're going to score your sheds. So that you have a pretty good idea when you, somebody says, hey, what does what that thing score? Because everybody always asks you the number. You're going to be able to give them, hey, that, 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 that's a 180 class buck. That's a, you know, that's a 350 bull. And I'm going to go over elk and deer just really quickly. They're very similar. You always have basically four things that you're going to score on every antler. You're going to score the tine length. You're going to score the beam length. You're going to score the mass. And you're going to include the inside score if you're, if you're going to give the overall score of the animal and not just the and not just the uh, the single shed score total. So I recommend I recommend that you use an app called Fractional Calculator. They have it for Apple, like I'm going to use here on this iPad. They have it for Samsung Galaxy. You can get it for everything, but it makes it very easy. You can also, of course, use paper and pencil, but then you have to add it all up later. This has a good history on it, so you can score the one side and then go back and, you know, see all your scores, uh, record them later. But just for example, to keep it simple, if you scored a uh, tine that was, say, 15 and 3 eighths, you just simply type in 15 and then 3 over here at the top of the fraction, 8 at the bottom of the fraction, and it will keep track of it and add it in eighths, which is very helpful because all scoring on antlers is done in one eighth inch increments. So that's what we're going to be using, fractional calculator, so that we can do it. I'll do it on my phone sometimes, but this time we're going to use the, the iPad so that you can kind of keep track. Now, I'm not going to, so to keep this video short, I'm not going to measure every tine measurement and every mass measurement on this thing on the video I'm simply going to show you how to do each one and then I'll include the totals here but for the beam measurement for elk and deer you're measuring the main beam for this bull we would start right here at the burr and we would go right down here down the side right here and measure the beam total on this deer we would do the same thing we're gonna come right here we're measuring this now, your official scorer would use a cable for our purposes. Simply some sort of soft tape measure is going to do just fine. It's going to get us to within, you know, a very reasonable amount of, of uh, accuracy. So, first thing I always measure, you can do them in any order you want to. I always measure the beam length first if I'm measuring the whole antler. So, let me set up and do that on both of these antlers. All right, so this bull actually for scoring main beam, he's a little bit different. He's got a little bit of a funny pedicle, the way he comes off the angle here. Um, might have could have grabbed a better example for it, but this will work. I'm going to start right here at the base of the burr. I'm just going to use both hands to kind of work. Hold the tape in place as I'm moving so that I don't cheat anything. Kind of work it around the corners. This bull's got a lot of swoops and curves. Let's hope the tape is long enough. So what is a good main beam on a bull? This will help you when you're field judging animals. You know, uh, 48 to 
you know, 46, 47, 48 would probably be considered a shorter beam bull. 50 is starting to get into a really nice bull. 50 to 55 is a big bull. 55 to 60, even 60 plus. Unreal. Big, 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 big bull. This one right here, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, and 2 eighths. So I would just take right here on my calculator, and I'm going to go 57 and 2, oops, hit history, 2 eighths. Okay, now we have our main beam. That's a, that's a big bull. So then we're going to measure tine length. I'm not going to measure all of them on this video because it's all the same. You basically picture if that beam did not have that tine on there, where would it begin? And that's when you where you start your measurement. So you'll see guys do this right here. If that beam discontinued without the point, where does that point actually begin? And so you can kind of run your, you can put your tape measure like that and kind of see that this point, you know, this continued like this, that point would start about right there. That's the beginning of the point and the end of the beam. So I'm going to start my measurement right there at that point. Measure on the back side of the point, keeping it kind of in the center of the point. This is going to be a pretty decent third on this bull. Okay, 17, 18, 19, 20. That was 20 on the dot. No need to, no need to measure any eighths on that one. That was a 20 inch third. So we're going to put 20 inches. Plus 20. All right, so you'll do that for all of the points on the beam. If you've got extras, if you're just, again, we're just talking about gross scores here. So if you've got extras, if you've got a, a fifth and a sixth down there, maybe even a seventh, maybe you've got a cheater off of it, maybe something drops off, you know, if you've got any other extras, like this one right here happens to have this extra right here. So when can you score these extras? It has to be at least an inch in length, and it has to be taller than it is wide at some point. So this one right here is probably would qualify. Um, but so then after you measure all of your time length, and again, the, the beam is counted as one of the points when we say he's a six point, but he's not counted. You don't score that again from the fifth on out. On this bull, we would just measure the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And then the extra, that would be all the time length. Okay, so after that, after you've got those and you've added them up, then you're going to measure mass measurements. Okay, now this bull, the mass measurement is taken at the point between the points at the smallest point. In this case, there's really only going to be one place to measure them. That bull is 11 inches on the dot right there in the center. But on a mass measurement like this, you actually have to take a couple of running measurements. So we'll hold our tape around here. We'll hold our tape around here and check a couple places. So right there's eight on the dot. That's eight and a couple, eight. You know, you just kind of check eight on the dot. So you check two or three spots, eight on the dot. So this mash measurement right here, we measured at the smallest point, is gonna be eight. This mash measurement right here, you do the same thing. You get, this one doesn't have quite as much room, but. So this is seven and six eighths, seven and five eighths, seven and seven and, or uh, no, that's, hang on. Yeah, seven and right there is seven and six eighths, seven and four eighths. So seven and four eighths would be our mash measurement right there. Add that in. Every bull and every buck's going to get four mass measurements. Say, for example, you have a five-point shed. A lot of people make this mistake. A lot of people make the mistake of giving him five mass measurements, including this one here. That's a mistake. Um, every bull gets four mass measurements. You get the one here between the first and the second, the one between the second and the third, the one between the third and the fourth, and the one between the fourth and the fifth. But what if he doesn't have a fifth? You would simply measure from the tip of the beam to the fourth here, and in the center between those two measurements is where you get your fourth mass measurement. So there you have, we've measured his beam. 
we've me measured all of his tines, we've measured the four mass measurements, and that's where you'll get your antler total, that, that's the total of the antler. Now, if you are measuring an elk on a skull plate like this one here, and actually getting the overall score of the elk, you would include the inside spread, not the outside spread. We talk about the outside spread when we're bragging to our buddies, but as far as scoring, it's inside spread. Now, what if you've got a set of sheds? For deer, if you've got the set, it's actually pretty easy to have somebody, I actually will have somebody hold that buck up, and we'll both kind of say, that's probably how that buck sat. Typically, I like to have the eye guards, you know, vertical and hold the bucks where he looks natural, like he would look on that buck's head, you know, where the spacing on the skull is about right, and then just simply give a measurement and you can be pretty close, you know, 20, 23, whatever, whatever it's going to be. So on a, on, on a bull, it's a little bit harder to do that. You can have somebody hold it up, but let's just say you want to have a guesstimation. You've scored the right antler, you've scored the left antler, you've added them together and let's see that they add up to 300 and, and, uh, 25 inches. You know, what, what, what is that bull going to be? Now on a really big bull, like my bull, that's downstairs, that bull is over 47 inches wide on the inside. This bull right here is a giant bull. This bull right here measures, just a quick look here, right there is 44. That's 44 to the, on the inside. Um, that's big. I typically, if I'm measuring a big antler, I know that I know is a big bull, 40 is usually my go-to. If I'm measuring a 330, 340, 350 bull, I'm, he's probably not like this bull over here, you probably can't see it, but that's about a 340 bull. I would probably give him 37, 36, 37, something like that. And you're gonna be pretty close. You're not gonna look like an idiot uh, scoring. Now, just to, to trans... Okay, now with deer, it's gonna be very similar. We're gonna have the same thing. We're gonna have, we're gonna have the beam length, main beam right here, we would measure right here to get his main beam length. Then I would measure his G1. In this case, we have two G1s. He's actually got a triple eye guard, but this one right here, probably it's not, I mean, you may, you maybe you could measure it from here up and call it that's a point and that's a point, but I probably wouldn't. Um, I would, I would score two of those. You'd have the one extra, which would be deduction if he was a, if he was a typical, but we're just, we're just going for net for, for gross score right here rather. Okay, so we're gonna measure the beam length, we're gonna measure the G1 and the extra here, then I would measure the G2, that's draw your line right here, Mark, put a little tape there, or just hold your tape there, measure him from there on up, that's a good G2, G3, measure it from there on up, G4, measure it from there on up, then you've got all your points scored. Mass measurements, you've got your, your H1, mass measurement two is there, Mass measurement three is there. Mass measurement four is there. Same thing with deer, always four mass measurements. If he didn't have this point and he was a three point, we'd measure halfway and measure, okay? So once you have your, your main beam, your tine lengths, your mass measurements, you add them up. Now, you know, what would that, bull, that, what would that buck score if he was, you know, on the animal, if I just tipped him over? And uh, what would he score? So I'm going to kind of score this antler and kind of go over to you how I would say this is a whatever class buck, you know, a 170, 160 class buck. Um, I'm going to measure him real quick. And even though I only have one antler, we're going to do some things to see if we can guesstimate just for fun. It's for fun. Uh, what size buck that is. So put in your guess. What do you think this buck right here? Look at him. That's a good buck. What is this single antler score in inches total? And what sort of class buck would he be? Is he a 130 buck, you want, you know, 150 buck, 200 inch buck? What do you think? Put in your guess. I'm going to guess him and I'll go over the score real quick. All right, so there is the antler total. If we click on the screen right there, you can see main beam length was 21 and 3 eighths. First eye guard was 22 and 4 eighths, then 2 and an eighth on the two eye guards. Uh, the G2 was 15 and 4 eighths, G3 12 and 2 eighths, G4 11 and 3 eighths, 
And we had the first measurements, 5 and 2 eighths and 5 and 2 eighths on both of those, 4 and 6 eighths and 4 and 6 eighths, total of 84 and 7 eighths. So then, you know, if we have one antler, what would this, if you want to guess, what would this buck be like if you had both sides? So the only thing you can do, unless you have trail counter pictures or have an idea, is just say, okay, what if the other antler matched? You know, there's a 50-50 chance that you have the small side or the big side. Most bucks are not exactly the same. But what if we had this set and both antlers just matched? They were the same. So 84 and 7 eighths, if the other antler was the same, plus 84 and 7 eighths. That buck, without any inside spread credit, is 169 and 3 quarters. Now, a buck that size, what would you say is a fair guess as to his size? Well, just to give you an example, that buck in the front right there is about 19 inches inside. The buck behind him is about 20 and a half. This buck right here is about 18. And that buck right there is about, oh, 17 and a half. A buck like this... I don't think you'd be stretching it any to give him a 20 inch inside. That's probably going to be probably going to be on the underside of what he actually is. So if we gave him 20 inches, that buck is right close to a 190 class buck, just under 180, 93 quarters. So he's going to be somewhere, you know, provided that the other side is fairly typical. That buck is somewhere between 185 and 190. So if I said I found a 185, 190 class buck, that would be a pretty honest way. If I posted this on my Facebook antler page and said this is a 185 to 190 class buck and anybody wanted to pitch a fit, you know, there's the numbers. That's about what he is. Should I give you the total on that one right there? Let me add him up real quick. All right, just for fun, I hurried up and scored that dude. So just did it really quick. So there's the ending on history here. There's where the buck ended. So we got main beam first. Even though that first looks really stubby on a bull that big, it's still just under 13. But uh, 57, 12, 17, 20. Twenty. What do we got there? Oh, yeah. The third and the fourth. That's kind of crazy. They're both come up to the same but you can see that that curve with all that hook on it ends up being the same length as that fourth it looks like and the fifth 12 and then that little extra that was on there uh came to then all the mass measurements right there came to 176 exactly and if he was the same on the other side, 176 and 176 equals 352. On a bull that big, I wouldn't be afraid at all to give him a 40-inch inside spread. Puts that bull in that, that uh, rare 390 space. How cool is that? Anyway, just want to do a quick video like that just to kind of give you some tips. Um, because it is honestly one of my pet peeves to have people throw out numbers that obviously don't know anything about numbers. And then you look dumb. I mean, you look petty if you say anything to try and help them. Hey, I'm not sure that's a... But, uh, I mean, we don't have to be exactly to the eighth. But we do want to have, uh, you know, some base of knowledge when we say what size an animal is. Because everybody's interested in size. I had somebody comment this morning on my video saying, Hey, if you hate the small antlers so much, why don't you just leave them there for someone that will appreciate them? Because I was commenting that I was finding mostly small antlers that day. And hey, I make no make no secret of the fact that I'm looking for big bulls and big bucks. And not that I'm not happy when I'm finding antlers. But I would rather find one nice four point over 32 points and three points any day of shed hunting. That's what I look for. So your expectations may be different, but I want to find the big guys, and I'm sure most of you guys do too. This will help you score them. If you've got any questions, you can comment down there. Uh, if you would, like the video, and uh, thanks for watching.